are, I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles to three portions of Scripture this afternoon, uh, to Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 4, and then we're going to finish, finish I, I'm, I'm still in Spanish mode, we're going to finish in Psalms um, 50, Colossians 3, Philippians 4, and Psalms 50. Uh, we are now in November. That's crazy, man. The November, December, all of a sudden we're 2022. Feels like 2020 was just last year. Oh, wait, it was just last year. But anyway, you know what I mean. And uh, before you know, we'll be in 2022 and we'll be like, man, it feels like 2020 was last year. But um, we, uh, um, you know, on the third, the fourth Thursday of the month of November, we uh, celebrate here um, Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, traditionally in Thanksgiving, we, we tell each other, happy Thanksgiving. Um, but I'm going to tell you that I, I'm not going to wait till the 25th. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and tell you right now, happy Thanksgiving. All right, happy Thanksgiving. And, um, and so you, the, the correct response would be happy Thanksgiving to you too, right? You know, so let's try it, right? Happy Thanksgiving. To you four that responded, I'm going to buy you a Christmas gift. The rest of you, don't be hating. You know, like, don't be, don't, yeah, the, when Santa doesn't show up for you, don't be mad at me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if, if there's a group of people, like, like if there are people that, that, you, that if someone told you, like, man, you know, I just want to be around some thankful people, it should be us. Like, like if there's a group of people in the world that, that should just be, be thankful, uh, be happy, excited, filled with joy, it, sh it should be us. I often say this, that, that if you show me someone who's always happy, smiling, excited, I bet you nine times out of ten, that's a thankful person. They're the, they're the type that they, they tell the, the waitress thank you, they tell the waiter thank you. They're the type that even after they charge them, they're like, ooh, ooh, thank you, right? You know, like they're that type, right? But you show me someone that's always bothered, always negative, long face, you know, just kind of grouchy, grouchy pants, as we say. I bet you that, that's an unthankful person. I, I bet that's the type of person that they never tell someone who holds the door for them. They never tell them thanks. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're the type that, you know, like in traffic, when you let a car go and you wave and they wave back. Now, they never wave. They just feel like it's their, their God-given right to cut you off in traffic, right? You know, I, I bet you they're, they're that type. Uh, but but we, we should be the thankful type. Like, like, we really should be the thankful type. And this past Friday, I was at, at, in our youth service at the spot, and I was sharing with the students. I was telling them, you know, like, if I told everyone, hey, let's sit on our hands. I'm not telling you to do this. But if I said, like, hey, let's all sit on our hands, and then now let's, let's give thanks, you know, it would be something like, thanks, right? You know, it would be, like, so, so dead and so somber. But if, if we all lifted up our hands, if we all lifted up our hands and gave God thanks, man, there, there, would, be, there would be an elevation in joy amongst us. They, we would raise up the bar when it comes to, to being excited, to being happy, to finding joy in the presence of the Lord. So uh, because we are in, in the month where we will be celebrate, celebrating Thanksgiving, why, why don't we take this moment? I want to invite you to, to raise your hand right there where you're at and just start thanking God. Just, just start saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, my heavenly Father. Say it out loud. Open your mouth and say it out loud. Don't, thank you, my heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessings in my life. Thank you that, that for your mercy. Uh, thank you for, for the joy that you give me. Thank you for the strength that you give me. Thank you for the peace that you give me. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for the grace and favor that you give us. Father, I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that, that you've shown us your love by saving us through your son, Jesus. Father, I thank you for, for everyone that's here. And I thank you that many of them are sitting with their entire family. Thank you, Father. What a blessing it is to come with family to church. Father, I thank you for those that join us through Radio Alleluia or through, through other, other means of communication, that you would bless them, prosper them. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this moment. And we thank you for the teaching that we're about to receive. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm going to ask a question and then I'll get started. Anyone, anyone here need peace in their lives? Anyone need peace in their lives? All right, good. Ten of us. The rest of you pray for us, right, man? You guys, you guys must have it going on, man. You guys have, have life put together. Like, we really need y'all then praying for us, right? And let me ask it again, because maybe I caught you by surprise. Any, anyone need peace in their life? Anybody need peace? Oh, okay, all right, good. Now it's 15, right? We went from 10 to 15, nice. All right, I like how those numbers increase, you know? It's probably like after you ask like 10 times, then the church will be like, okay, fine. If that'll shut them up, I'll raise my hand, right? I'm like, that's okay. 
You know, there's something about peace, right? There's something about peace, like, 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 like we never have enough of it. Uh, we, we always need it, uh, and we always need more. And this uh, past Friday, I was with the youth here at church, and I was teaching about Thanksgiving, and I was telling them that when we are thankful to the Lord, like when we tell God, thank you, God, um, th thankfulness, thanksgiving, brings two, two, of, two of its friends with it. When we say thank you, when we, when we develop that spirit, and it shouldn't just be something that we say once in a while, it should be like the life we live, like, like we should be a people, like this is our, our, our lifestyle, this is the way we live life, it's just a, a life of gratitude. And when we are thankful, um, God sends us his mercy, right? And, and when we are thankful, God sends us his goodness. And God's mercy, God's goodness, and God's peace are things that we never get enough of, all right? It's really interesting because when it comes to God's mercy, God's goodness, and God's peace, it's not something you can buy. Like, like you can't go to Walmart and fi find it in aisle eight, right, on the right-hand side, sir, on the bottom. Like, like you're not going to find it there, right? And, and even if you could go to Walmart and find it in aisle eight there on the bottom, uh, you'd have to show up every day because every day you would need more. You'd need more of God's mercy, more of God's goodness, more of God's peace, right? And, and so something amazing about peace. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live, live in what? In peace and always be thankful. Th there's a connection between peace and thankfulness. When we are thankful to the Father, the peace that comes from Christ will rule in your heart. And as members of the body in Christ, we will live in peace. But we must learn to be thankful. Right? I, I want to share with you um, two reasons why our hearts are filled with peace when, when we are thankful. Right? Uh, one of the reasons is that when we are thankful, uh, it, it's, it's almost admitting that, hey, things could be worse, right? You know, I, I'm thankful because uh, uh, things could be worse, yet here I am, right? Here I am, still fighting the fight and running the race. But, but we, we need to learn to be thankful, right? Thankful. Because when we are thankful, we're saying like, hey, we know that it could be worse, but here we are. You know, Paul said famously, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, right? And, um, and, and when you look at that fight, I don't know how many of y'all saw the, the fight uh, last night um, of, of uh, uh, Canelo and Plant, right? I'm, I'm going to be honest, I, I, saw, I saw the fight, but um, I, I wasn't even waiting for that fight. I, I really, I, you know, because UFC was on last night as well, right? And so, no joke, my brother-in-law had, had the fight on the TV, but my nephews had UFC on the iPad for me, right? And so I, I, was, I was waiting for that, 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 that uh, Kobe and, and, and uh, Usman fight. And so in that fight, not, not the Canelo and the other one, but the other main event and the UFC, man, they, they knocked my man down. I was going for Kobe, right? They knocked him down. In the, in the second round, I think it was the second round, they knocked him down. I was like, don't look good. Right? But you know what? He got back up, and he fought a third round, and he fought a fourth round, and he fought a fifth round, right? When we are thankful to God, it's a way of admitting that, you know what? The devil may have made me trip, but I'm still standing now. Right? I may have fallen, but I've gotten back up and I'm still in this fight. I'm fighting the good fight. I'm going forward. When we are thankful, it, it, it's a realization that God is still working in our lives. Right? That God is moving in our lives. It, we, we may not see it. We may not understand how. Uh, we may think that, well, man, it just hasn't happened on the time that I'm waiting for. But let me tell you, God is working in your life. We used to sing a song in Spanish. Uh, every once in a while, the guys will sing it. And, and, and one of my favorite parts of that song says, y cuando el guarda silencio es porque está trabajando. And, and what that means in English is that when he keeps silent is because he is working. Let me tell you that right now, in this moment, God is working in your life. And he's using everything around you, everything that has happened for your good and for his honor and for his glory. Couple of, we spent a couple of months studying the Gospel of Mark, uh, September and October, I believe. 
And early in September, we, we came across that, that portion of scripture of where Jesus and his disciples get into a boat and others get into boats and they start crossing the sea. And while they're out there in the sea, all of a sudden this storm came up. And, and, and the, some of the disciples of Jesus, they were fishermen. So they knew what it was like to be in a boat in the sea. They knew what it was like to be in storms. And when they saw that the water started filling up the boat, they knew and understood like we're in trouble, right? We're in trouble. And, and they ran and they woke Jesus up and Jesus woke up and he rebuked the winds. And the Bible says that there was great peace, right? The, the waters just calmed. There was peace on them. This is, this is a, a, a reminder of what we learned as we studied that portion of scripture. That you and I, no matter what, will have to go through storms, right? No matter what we do, no matter what church we're a part of, who's my pastor, who's not my pastor, you know what? It does not matter. We all in this life will go through storms. But I'd rather go through a storm with Jesus in the boat than to be in the boat without Jesus in the middle of the storm, all right? So when we give thanks, it's a reminder that God is with us and he's working from where we're at there in Colossians chapter 3, I'm going to ask you to take a few pages to the left and, and join me in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Will you give me verse 7 first? Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Right? God has a peace for you, which exceeds anything we can understand. Some Bibles say, which surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that God has for you. Let me tell you that pretty much everything that God has for you, the devil has a counterfeit. So God offers you one thing, the devil offers you something that looks similar, but it's fake. It's, it's a counterfeit. I, I told y'all last week about that interview I was seeing with that rapper, and he had that chain and, and, the, and all those medallions with diamonds, and, and those guys were like, put the pin, right? And they, they put the pin to see if those diamonds were real, and then they, they acted like they put the pin, but they didn't put the pin, and he, he got all mad because he thought that the diamonds were fake. Um, I remember my dad one time told us that he was out and about and there was this guy and he had like a big old necklace, big old crucifix. And so my dad was like, Dang, is that real? And the guy was like, yeah. And so my dad says, like, like, like can, I, can I hold it? And the guy was like, yeah, I guess. So my dad's like, man, you know, he's expecting like, man, this is, this is weight, right? And, and, and he grabs it and he goes, no, nah, man, it was hollow, right? You know, it was hollow like that. And that that's the, type of, that's the type of peace that the enemy offers you. He, he brings it in the form of, of, of pornography, of alcohol, of drugs, of, of uh, adultery. Whatever. You know, it, 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 they're little things that satisfy you for a moment, and, and then you walk with the guilt. Then you walk with the, like, man, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Man, I shouldn't have gone there. Man, I shouldn't have talked to that person, what have you. But what God offers you is a peace that surpasses all understanding. It exceeds anything we can understand. Now, if the peace that God is offering you surpasses all understanding, that means that it is a supernatural peace. Right? It's a peace that, that we can't even understand. Therefore, it is a supernatural peace. It is a miraculous peace. It is a peace that comes from heaven. Right? This is what God has for you. Okay. Now, when we read, for instance, right now we're in Philippians. When we read the Bible... Something that you and I have to understand, in this case, Philippians, is that when Paul wrote Philippians, he didn't write it with chapter and verse. It's a, it's a letter. He just, he just wrote a letter, right, to the Philippians. Um, you know, I, I, I get um, letters from prisoners, and, um, and so sometimes they write me, like, just a brief message, uh, and if you're listening... Um, Please keep it brief. And, you know, they'll write me like a brief message and I'll, I'll, I'll read it and I'll respond. And, and some of them, you know, they'll write me a couple of pages. So like on one side, they'll put one. On the other side, they'll put two. And then the next page, they'll put three and four. I, I guess because I, I assume that someone probably checks the letters before they, they mail them out to us. 
And then, um, you know, they may not put it in the order. So the prisoners want me to know the order. Some of them, man, they write me like 20 pages. I'm like, nah, man, come on, fam. I'll get you like page three or four, you know, but page 20, 21, I'm like, oh, that's, that's a little too much, right? Uh, you know, I only have a certain amount of bandwidth. But, um, uh, you know, my good friend, he's here. I'm, I'm not going to call him out, but he, he's going to laugh at what I'm going to say. Uh, we used to, uh, like, email each other, and, and uh, man, he, he would send me, like, these long emails, and I would, I would respond back and be like, Roly, you didn't send me an email. I said his name. I was like, Roly, you didn't send me an email. You sent me an essay, right? You know, like that. And so we used to say, like, man, you need to add chapter and verse, boy. You know, like, that thing's so long, right? But that's not how Paul wrote this. Chapter and verse, you know, chapter 4, verse 7, later was added so that we could find, find it, like, you know, reference to it, okay? Now, I'm going to tell y'all something, all right? Now, please, please pay attention, all right? Every service, I've had someone fail, all right? So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you something. What is, now listen to what I'm going to ask, what is the first word, not words, plural, Word, singular. What is the first word of verse 7? Thank you. You guys passed me. Every service, they would say, then you will experience, right? Like, I'm like, I said one word. Because la primera palabra, right? What's the first word? And, and they would, every service, I'm like, are you serious? You're not listening? What's going on, right? The word is then, right? Then. So this word then shows us that verse 7, right? Once again, who needs some of God's peace? All right. Who needs that peace that surpasses all understanding? Okay. Verse 7, God's peace that surpasses all understanding is dependent on what came before verse 7. All right. That's what that word then. In other words, it's like an if then, right? If you do this, then you get this, right? This is, this is how I train my, my daughters, right? You know, like, hey, if you sit there quietly when your mom's not looking, I'll give you chocolate, right? You know, like that. You know, that, that's how, the if, then, right? So let's go to verse six. Verse six says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. What's your playbook? You know, earlier I asked who, 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 who needs peace. And right now, again, I asked who needs peace. And pretty much all of us raised our hand. But I'm, I'm going to ask you, what's your playbook? What's the plan? Anybody here watch football? Anybody here? Who's, who's playing today? Somebody throw out a team. Who's playing? The Cowboys are playing today? Those Cowboys me los mencionas. I'm just kidding, right? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> When, when, when Tony Romo used to play, uh, one of my tíos was like, every week me enojo con Tony Romo, but every week pongo mi esperanza que va a ganar, you know, like, it's like, oh, it's like okay. All right, the Cowboys are playing. Who are they playing, do you know? Uh, Who? The Broncos? Esos son los de Denver, por allá, verdad? Like that. And um, so, you know, the, the Cowboys and the Broncos, they're, they're, they're going to line up at the scrimmage. Yo no sé mucho de fútbol, pero esto sí sé, right? Vamos a decir que the, the Cowboys, they're on the offense, right? And, and, and they're, they're going to line up, and, and, and the, the coaches, the analysts, they're, they're, looking, they're looking at the score, they're looking at where they're at on the field, what yard line, they're, they're, they're looking at what players they have and what players the defense has out on the field. Um, they're, they're looking at uh, what's the score. Uh, they're looking at uh, uh, what plays have the highest percentage, how many, how many yards they need for, for first down, right? They're looking at all that. And so then they're, they're making the call, right? And, and this whole time they got this book, right? Someone's on the side and he's got a book and he's like, he's looking through the book. And then all of a sudden, you know, they yell like a bunch of numbers, states, cities, colors, 22, 23, 23, red, Texas, right? You know, whatever, right? And, and, and the other team, Los Broncos, 
They're, they're going to be looking at the situation. They're looking at what yard line they're at. They're looking at how many uh, passes ha have been thrown or how many times the ball has been ran. They're looking at what players are on offense, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, what's the formation. And, and their coach has, has his own book. He's got his own playbook. Oh, man, they're running 22, 22. And then, you know, and so then they're, they're yelling, right? Gills 44, 44, 43, right? And, and they're, no, 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 that's the wrong number you said 43 no you said 42 and they're fighting on the field right and they're like trying to figure out how they're going to line up the playbook the playbook last night el, el canelo y el plan se agarraron allí el, el, el puro pleito allí and uh, they uh, they spent months preparing for each other right months of uh, of their coaches looking at at film and can mira you know this guy likes to throw two left jabs and then a right hook so when he throws those two left jabs you back up right? oh man look look notice his footwork he does two shuffles to the left and then he always steps forward with the right you know so when he takes those two no you be ready get them right there with the with the hook right and man they they come they, they all have a plan to get punched in the mouth that's look at they call Mike Tyson right you know like but but they got they got a plan you, you said that you needed peace. You said that you need God's peace. And, and now I'm asking you, what's your plan? A couple of months ago, I, I went to the doctor and told my wife, I'm like, babe, you know, I, I don't think I've ever had like a wellness check, physical. I, go, I, should, I should probably do it at my age. Yeah, it's tiempo, right? Yeah, it's tiempo. And so I called the doctor and I said, doctor, I need a wellness check. So he says, okay, come, you know, fast. I already knew I was supposed to fast because my mom always fasts when she goes to the doctor. So I go and they send me to get blood taken out. They get blood taken out and I go home. And then about two hours later, Nayeli's like, hey, did, did the doctor give you a, a, a prescription? And I'm like, no. And she goes, well, Walgreens just sent a text that you have a person. And right when she says that, my phone rings and says that my doctor's office. So, so I answer and the, the, you know, the, the secretary or whatever she's called, she says, Mr. Villarreal, yes. And she goes, your cholesterol's really high. The doctor just prescribed you medicine. You need to go get it and call us in three months for a follow-up. And, and I asked her, I'm like, what, what, what? You can't put me on the diet first? And she's like, no, sir, it's really high. I go, but stop, give me the numbers. Give me the numbers. I'm, I'm writing, I don't know nothing. LDL, I don't know nothing about that. But anyway, I wrote down the numbers, right? And so there, there I go to, so then I tell my wife, I'm like, babe, it's a doctor. And what do he say? I mean, the doctor says that my cholesterol is really high. And she says, really? And I go, come on, really, babe. 45 years of eating burgers, uh, tacos, pizza. Ya era tiempo that I found out that my cholesterol was high. Like, you know, come on. So then what does the doctor tell you? The doctor says, hey, you need to lose weight. Alta presión ya me tiene, I have to lose weight. What's the plan? But I'm going to lose weight. That's not a plan. I'm going to lose weight. That, that's not a, that's, I'm sorry, man, but that's, that's, not, that's not a plan. Right? Some, some will say, well, I'm going to eat healthier. That's not a plan. I mean, what does that mean? You're going to eat healthier. That's not a plan. Like, that's not a plan. I'm, I'm going to do exercise. I'm going to tell you, that's, that's not a plan either. What does that mean? You're going to do exercise? What does that mean? I do a sit, sit up every day when I wake up and when I go back to sleep. I mean, you know, like, what does that mean? Can, can, you know? No, no, no. A, a, a plan, right? A plan is to say that, hey, you know, I, I need to eat healthy, so I'm going to buy chicken and some broccoli. And this week, Monday through Friday, bro, chicken and broccoli. And I'm going to measure how much I need for my, my size, my age, my height. And next week, uh, salmon and what, what's that? Quinoa. It looks like, a, it looks like rice. What is that called? What? Esa cosa. Esa también. Y ese sí se come, as the pastor would always ask. Se come? Ese sí se come, right? Uh, quinoa? All right. King, whatever, quinoa, put a quinoa y, y, y salmon, you know, and then the following week, put vegetables, right? That's a plan. And I'm meal prep. I know what I'm going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, me watch flat. Sunday, we have to go out to eat after church. I mean, come on, you know. And then again, Monday, Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? That's a plan. Right? Say, what's your plan? I'm going to go to the gym. That's not a plan. There's a lot of people, they go to the gym and they just look around and they leave. See, going to the gym is not a plan. Right? 
well, I, mean, I saw some guys on the treadmill I got on it. And then what? Then I left, right? Like, like, no. I mean, a plan is like I hired a trainer, and the trainer measured me, took my weight, took my, you know, see, see my waist, see todo, you know, and, and, you know, and now, now this is what I'm doing Monday. You know, I'm, I'm lifting weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, I'm, I'm doing, you know, back and, 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 and by, and Wednesday I'm doing, you know, tries and legs, I don't know, and Friday, you know, whatever. And Tuesday and Thursdays, I rest. I just walk moderately, walk too much. See, that's a plan. But I'm just going to do exercise. That's not a plan. So you say, hey, I need peace. What's the plan? Well, I'm going to go to church. That, I mean, that, that's, that's not the plan. I hate to tell you. I mean, I'm here and I want you here at church, but that, that's not really the plan. That, that's not the playbook. See, the, the playbook is giving you the plan. And we find it in verse 6. And the first play of the playbook is don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't worry about it. Now, I'm going to tell you something because you, you have a somewhat honest pastor. Somewhat. I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to be the first to raise my hand and say I struggle with the first play. I'm the first one to raise my hand and I'll say, man, it's hard for me to not worry about anything. Who, who, I saw number two and number three. I, yeah, I veil four and five. Okay, no, hombre. It's hard. It's hard. But this, this is what scripture is saying. Don't worry about any, anything means 100%. Right? A anything is not 50%. It's not some things. It's not most things. It's anything. Anything means everything. Anything doesn't even mean 90% or 99% or 99.9%. Anything means 100%. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't be anxious about it. M many of us, we're anxious about so many things. And, and, and let me tell you, I, I deal with anxiety. I, I, know, I know I'm in that boat with you. I'm, I'm one of the ones running, telling Jesus, wake up, you know, rebuke the storm, you know. Like. Notice that it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Many of us worry about things because we don't pray about everything. We try and deal with things through, through you know, man, I'm a smart guy. I can figure this out. Man, I've got some skills. I can figure this out. Man, I've got some resources. I can pay this out. Man, I, I, I know someone, or at least I know someone that knows someone that can help me out, right? Like, like no. The reason that many of us struggle with anxiety and we worry about things is because first we go to our, 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 our abilities, then we go to our skills, then we go to our resources, then we go to who we know, and then when it's no, 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 then, oh, oh, Diosito, Diosito, help me, God, God, help me. And your Heavenly Father is like, mijo, sufres porque quieres. You should have come to me to begin with, right? You should have come to me first, right? Should have come to me first. It's like people, like the day before the divorce, now they want to go to marriage counseling. Like, like no, you know, like, like, like you go and deal with that early so that you don't reach that point, right? So you come to God, prayer about everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. And um, my family always hates when, whenever I uh, use them as, as uh, you know, when I share stories, but, you know, oh, well. And um, so uh, one day, you know, my brother-in-law, he bought my sister a, a, a truck. And um, this is like her dream truck. She's always talking about, the, oh, one day I'm going to have one of those. One day I'm going to have one of those. My brother-in-law bought her. He's a, he's a good husband, right? And um, so, you know, she shows up in, in her new truck. And I ask what all Hispanics ask. ¿Y esto de dónde salió? Right? You know, like that. You know, like, you know, like and this is where did it come from. Like, you know, like, well, from the dealership. I mean, Nimosque, like, from an egg. Like, what do you, like, you know, like, I don't know why we ask that. You know, like, Nimosque fell from heaven. You know, like, it's like, ¿Y esto de dónde salió? And so my sister, she, she tells me this story that she, you know, for years she would tell uh, uh, my brother-in-law, hey, I want this truck, I want this truck. And, and I think they were going on vacation, they were going out of town, and on the way out, there was a dealership of, of that vehicle that she wanted, and, um, and they stopped to look, and she's all mad because she's like, man, let's go, we're wasting time on vacation, we're here looking at these trucks, right? And, um, and so, you know, they looked at the truck and everything, and she's like, ready to go. But the sell, man, you know how those sellers are. The other day, I took my truck to, the, um, to get maintenance at the dealership, and man, they're like piratas. Like, I mean, you can't even pull in. I'm not afuera waiting like that. And, Can I help you, sir? I'm like, I'm just going to get an oil change. You know, like, I heard they had free coffee. And um, 
So anyway, so the seller asked her, this is a killer question right here, for those of you that are in sales, right? The seller asked her, what stops you from buying this truck today? Right? What stops you from buying this truck today? For those of you that witness, when, when you witness, you share the gospel of Jesus with someone, you, man, that's a good question to ask them. What stops you from putting your faith in Jesus today, right, like that. Next time you're talking to your family, tell, hey, what stops you from putting your faith in Jesus today? So, so he says, like, what stops you from buying the vehicle today? Because, you know, like, if you say, like, well, I don't know if I can make the payments. They take you to the finance manager, and he's like, sucking a calculator like he's doing something there. He already knows what he's going to charge you, right? And, and so, they, well, where do you work? What kind of job do you do? And, man, they, you know, they're just picking. How many kids do you have? They're trying to figure out, like, your, your, you know, where do you live? What's your zip code, right? You know, like, and, okay. And let, let me, I'm just going to give you some free advice, all right? Um, you ever go negotiate for the price of vehicle? Don't negotiate the payment. Don't, don't negotiate the payment. Negotiate the price, right? Some of you come out all have 20, 21, $200 a month. Yeah, and you're financed for 20 years. <laughs> like, like, what the? <laughs> that truck ain't going to last 20 years, you know? Or, or, you know, at the end of five years, you have this huge balloon payment. Like, don't negotiate the payment. Ne negotiate the price. Anyways, that was a free one. I'm not going to charge. That's free financial advice. And, you know, if you want more, we can talk later. Anyways, so he, he says, what stops you from buying this truck today? And my sister tells him, well, I need to pray about it. And if it's of the Lord... I'll see you in six weeks. But if it's not of the Lord, I ain't going to see you. Right, like that. that. You see, since it wasn't about payment, the guy couldn't say, like, oh, let's go to talk to the manager, because she said, you know, that's between her and the Lord. Now, if he would have had a pastor on staff, he could have said, oh, well, let's go talk to the pastor, right? You know, like that. He can't help you pray right now, you know, but they, I guess they didn't have a pastor on staff. So anyways, when she told me that, she's like, you know, like, I have to pray about it. Was it six weeks or six months? Was it six months? So she's like, I'll have to pray for it for six months. She goes, I'll pray for it. If in six months it's of the Lord, I'll be here. And if it's not of the Lord, I won't see you. I guess it was the Lord because years have passed. She still has the truck, right? You know, so I guess it was the Lord. But when she told me the story, you know, you know what my reaction was? My, my reaction was this. <laughs> you know why? Because just a couple of months before, I had bought a new truck. And I didn't pray. I'm honest, I didn't pray. And I'm like, I'm the pastor of the family. And my sister, me puso el ejemplo, right? She's the example to me that, hey, need to pray. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about what? Everything. Just like anything, everything is 100%. Everything. Pray about everything. I have a situation and, and that has, has me really stressed out. And, and, and last night as I was teaching on this, I was like, man, I, I'm stressed out because I really haven't been praying about it. And, you know, I pray like once in a while about it. But I'm, I'm like, no. And so now I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated like every day, sometimes several times a day, I'm praying over this certain situation. I'm, I'm starting to message certain friends of mine, um, asking them to, to pray for this situation that, that, that's happening um, in my life, that's happening around me. Um, and, and I notice that the situation is still there, but my, my, my level of worriness, my level of anxiety, my level of anxiousness has fallen. Why? Because now it's no longer up to me for the outcome. I'm putting it in God's hands. All right? And if I'm not worrying about anything. I'm praying about everything. I'm telling God what I need. Wait, man, it's in his hands, right? So the playbook is don't worry about anything. Second play is, first play, don't worry about anything. Second play is pray about everything. Third play is tell God. Tell God what you need, all right? Tell God what you need. But well, it's not a big deal. What is a big deal for God? Well, it's a small thing. What's big for God? Right? Nothing is impossible for God. Right? For God, nothing is impossible. Right? So don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And then we finish with what? Thank Him for all He's done. Right? Thank Him. Thank Him. Learn to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Learn to say, thank you, Father. And I'm going to tell you, don't just thank God in the good. Don't just thank God in the victory. Thank God in the hard stuff. Thank God for the storms. Right? Thank, thank God for those times that you've got to walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead. Why? Because he is there with you. 
right? He don't need to walk with you. But he walks with you even through the valley of the shadow of the death. Why? Because he loves you. Thank God that he is with you. Thank God that he is answering prayers. Thank God that he is working for you. I mean, let's just take a moment right now just to simply say, thank you, Father God. Somebody help me and say that. Say, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Psalms 50. Now, I'm going I'm to be real honest. You know, there are certain times, certain situations where, where it is hard to say, thank you, God. Things didn't work out the way you wanted to work out. He didn't answer the prayer the way you wanted him to answer the prayer. He remained silent when you wanted to hear thunder. Right? He remained invisible when you wanted to see lightning. Right? He remained smoke when you wanted to see fire. Thank God. I remember some years ago, uh, we were working on a deal, and, and well, the deal didn't go through, and my dad uh, saw my dad, and my dad says, you know, in Spanish, any novedad, you know, anything new. And I go, well, some bad news. And he goes, what happened? And I go, well, the deal is dead. It's not going to happen. And so we stood there, kind of a little awkward silence, and then he says, Gloria a Dios. Praise be to God. And then he hits me on my chest, and he says, Di Gloria a Dios. And I go, Gloria a Dios, right? I was like, praise, praise the Lord. It's, it's a true story. It's just like that. Praise the Lord. But you know, as time went by, I was like, praise the Lord. Time kept going by, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Time kept going by, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I don't know how many years have passed since that day, but I'm here today standing up and I'm still saying, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because only he knows what he saved us from. Psalm 50, verse 14 says, make thankfulness your sacrifice to God. All right. Sometimes giving thanks is a sacrifice. Right? When you're dealing with depression to give God thanks, that's a sacrifice. You're dealing with anxiety to give God thanks, that's a sacrifice. You're mourning the loss of a loved one and, and you thank God for, for their life, the time you spent with them and, and, and that you still have life. That, that, that's a sacrifice. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, right? Give God thanks and understand that, that sometimes it, it, it's a sacrifice, but, it, but it's worth it. This sacrifice is worth it because when you thank God, you're able to enter into his presence. The Bible says, enter through his gates with thanksgiving, through his courts with praise. Enter through his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. There's some people, man, they're in church, but their spirit is still outside of the church out there in the parking lot. Because they didn't realize that to come in here into the presence of God, you have to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. That, that's the password. Thank you, Lord. I was with the youth and I was sharing them fr uh, uh, Friday that I have an older brother. He's four years older than I am. And, you know, four years older, that's kind of an awkward, you know, gap. Uh, you know, when I was 11, he was, uh, well, let's think. When he was a teenager, 13, I was barely nine when I was like 11, he's 15. When I was 12, he's 16. And, you know, so he didn't really want to be hanging around with me. And then, you know, how boys are, we're just constantly picking at each other. And so uh, one time, you know, he, he was passing by and I just kind of put my leg out, in, in, you know, like that. And so he's like, move. And, um, and I asked, what's the password, right? And um, I, I think I was about 11. He was about 15, right? So he's a lot bigger than I am and something like that. And he's like, move. And I'm like, what's the password? So he goes like this to me. Like, he was going to hit me. I was like, that's a good password, man. Go ahead, man. That, that's, that's a good password. Like that. And, um, and so anyway, so like another time, I was walking by, and, and he, he put his leg out, you know, like that. So I'm like, move, dude. Like, I, of course I can go around, but, you know, hey, man, that's my, my way, right? So I'm like, move. And, and, and so he, he's like looking at TV. He's ignoring me. I'm like, move. And so he, he goes, what's the password? So I did it to him. I went like that to him, right? And, he's, and so again, man, he's, he's probably like 15, 16, I'm like 11, 12. And he's like, do it. Do it. You know? Like, you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. And I was like, please. Right? That's a good password, right? <laughs> please, please. And he, he's just watching TV. And I'm, I'm, so I'm like, please. And, and he, so then, then I use the, the international little brother password. Right? I'm And man, he put that foot down real fast, right? Like that, no can no, you know, like that, you know, because she, he knows better, right? And so when you're the favorite, man, you, got, you just, everything falls your way, you know? And so he had to move, you know? He had to move, right? 
Well, there, there's a password to come into the presence of God. You, 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 just, you just can't roll up any old way. Okay? You, you just can't, hey, I'm here. Like, who cares? <laughs> right? No, no, no. There's a password for you to come. And that password is thank you, Lord. Right? When you learn to give God thanks, you will see you're in his presence. You, you begin to notice him working in your life. You begin to notice the blessings. And the more you thank him, the more you're going to notice his presence and his blessings in his life. I want to finish today sharing with you three truths, three reasons on why we should be thankful. The first is that God loves you. Right? God loves you. If you didn't know, you know now. Right? God loves you. If no one's told you that you were told today, God loves you and he loves you very much. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See how much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children. And that is what we are. All right? You are a child of God. God calls you His son. God calls you His daughter. You know, I, I have two girls and, 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 and one on the way. We're not, we're not going to find out. Um, there's no gender reveal party going to happen here. We're, we're going to wait till, till the baby's born. That's going to be the gender reveal party right there, right? You know, when the baby's born. But we're all praying and fasting for a boy, right? You know, helping me out, right? And so, anyway, man, I love my kids. You know, I, I think all parents here, you know, love their kids. You know, just something, you know, in us that you automatically love your kids. And, um, but I didn't get to pick them. I, I didn't get to pick my daughters. You know, when they put them in, that, in the nursery when they're born and you look through, through, the, through the little window, you know, I wasn't like, oh, man, I kind of like that one over there. Like, you know, like, like, like they didn't give me that option. I don't know about your hospital, but my hospital didn't give me that option, right? They're, they're kind of like, sir, this one's yours. You, but, but, it's not, but okay. And so, uh, you know, and, um, I, I didn't get to pick them. I mean, I love them, love them to death, you know. But I, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of parents here that say, man, I love my kids to death, but every once in a while I wish I could exchange them. No, I'm just kidding, right? You know, it's, it's a passing thought. It's just a passing thought, right? You know, like, it's, it's not a thought that stays, but, you know, it's just kind of passing, like, you know, and, and um, then you're like, no, 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 forgive me, Lord, forgive me. I even thought that. I need lo mande mi Padre Celestial, right? You know, like, we start, we start repenting for all of that, right? But, you know, sometimes it pass. But, you know, when you, when you adopt, when you adopt, that, that's, a, that's a special kind of love. When a parent adopts a child, because, you know, I remember when we were leaving the hospital with Rebecca, I, I told Nayeli, ¿Y como? Like, where's, where's the manual? Like, they didn't even give me a test. How, how can they even trust me with this kid? I mean, like, you know, like, what, like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's mine. Like, you know, like, I was all nervous and scared. Like, there's no instructional manual. There's no follow-up, sir. Are you being a good father? Like, there's nothing. It's just like, here, here's your kid. Get out of here. It's like, what, you know, like, and, um, but when you adopt, when you adopt, that's a choice that the mother or the father make to say, I want him. I want her. Right? And, and, and that's, a, that's a special kind of love to say, I want him, I want her. You know, like that. And, and that's the special kind of love that God has shown you, is that he picked you. He chose you. He, he saw everybody and said, I want him. I want her. God loves you so much that he calls you his child. Right? So be thankful that God loves you. Right? God loves you. Right? The second truth that I want to share with you is that his mercy endures forever. Right? God's mercy endures forever. That, that means that, that it never stops. That means that it never ends. And that means that it never pauses. Okay? If, if God's mercy for you was deposited in a box there under your bed, every morning you would wake up, open it, and find out that there would be new mercy there. Right? His mercy endures forever. His mercy is like his goodness. It's like his love, and it's like his peace. You'll never have it. You'll never say, oh, God, I have so much of your mercy. You know what? Just give some to my neighbor because I'm tired of it. You know, like, like you're never going to say that, right? I've never, in, in my entire uh, career as, as a pastor, as a preacher, I've never had someone come and tell me, you know, pastor, I just, I just have so much of God's mercy that sometimes I pray for, for, you know, for him to pass a little bit to my cousin, you know, like, like I've never heard anybody say that. I've, I've had a lot of people come in and say, pastor, will you pray for me? You know, I, I need, and in and, and short, uh, a short way of saying it is they're basically telling me, I need God's mercy. I need God's peace. Psalms 106 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithfulness 
and love, his faithful love endures forever. Right? God loves you and his mercy and his love endures forever. All right, the third, third truth I want to share with you this afternoon as we prepare to finish is that nothing, nothing can separate us from his love. Right? He loves you, his love, his mercy endures forever, and nothing can separate us from his love. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 says, And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears uh, for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing. Not your worries, not your anxiety, not your depression, not your fears, not the lies of the enemy, right? not your trip ups, not your mess ups. Nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. You know, I think about these three truths, that God loves us, that his mercy and his love endures forever, and that nothing will be able to separate us from his love. I only have one thing to tell God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In this moment, I want to invite you to close your Bibles. And if possible, uh, bow your head and close your eyes and, and just start thanking God that you're here today. Thank, if someone brought you, thank God that, that they brought you Thank God that you're here. If, you, if you're with your family, thank God that you're here with your family. But thank God that, that you came to church today. Thank you, Father. Thank you that, that we're here. Thank you that we're able to start the week off here in, in your house of worship. Thank you, Father. Gracias, Señor. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word and the promises in your word that are as true today as they were when they were written. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love that endures forever. And thank you that nothing will ever separate us from your love. This moment, I'm going to ask if you need God's peace in your life, Will you, as an act of faith, will you just raise your hand? If, if you say, you know, Pastor, I need that peace that surpasses all understanding. I need that peace that exceeds all understanding. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God is with you. God bless you. God, God is with you. God knows. God is working in your life. God bless you. you can put your hands down. God bless you. God bless you. Don't worry. Pray about everything. Bring it before the Lord in prayer. What's been stealing your peace? Bring it before the Lord in prayer. What has been hindering your peace? Bring it before the Lord in prayer. Put it before God. Your heavenly Father loves you. He wants to know what's up. He wants to know what's going on. He knows what's happening, but he wants you to tell him. He wants you to ask for help. He wants you to put it before him. It's so simple. You just, you just say, Father, I need you. Father, I need your peace in my life. I need your peace in my marriage. I need your peace in my family. Father, I'm scared and I need you to walk with me. I need to feel your hand. I need to feel your hug. I need to feel your embrace. Father, I'm not feeling well. I need healing. I need strength to get through this. Father, I feel like I'm on the floor. I, I need you to, to pick me up and I need you to carry me away. God loves you. God loves you in this moment. He is with you. God loves you and he is with you. 
Receive his peace. Receive his mercy. Receive his goodness. Say it, say, Father, I receive your peace. Father, I receive your mercy. Father, I receive your goodness. Father, I receive your love. I receive your promises. Let me pray for you, Pueblo's Church. Father God, I put Pueblo's Church in your hands. And those that are joining us through media outlets, as that your Holy Spirit would be over them, would be with them, and would be in them. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your peace. Fill them with your mercy. Fill them with your goodness. Oh, Lord, let us rejoice and that we are your children and you are our Father. That you never forsake us, you never abandon us, and you love us wholeheartedly. Bless every household that was represented here this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's get the